So we have this as an intermediate. So this is a final product if we don't give this carry out hydration. Now since we are carrying out hydration, further reaction will occur on this epoxy ring. But this is the product and this can be given as an individual reaction to you. We have an alkene and we have a peroxy acid and this is what we get, a three member epoxy ring. Fine. Now, now we are carrying out hydration, we are giving H plus H2O. What could happen? Now let me rub this off. Shall I rub this off? Okay. What can happen? We are adding H plus and H2O, H plus will come and H plus will demand for electron. No one has electron except oxygen. So there is not much to think about. H plus will come and form a bond with oxygen. So what would it be like? Oxygen will form a coordinate bond with hydrogen. Fine, oxygen when forms a coordinate bond with oxy uh, hydrogen, oxygen gives its electron to hydrogen and oxygen attains plus charge on itself which oxygen do not like because oxygen is second most electronegative element, plus charge on it is not stable. So something can should happen to remove all that plus charge from oxygen. So what can happen is oxygen must break one of the bond. So oxygen is making three bonds, it has to break one of the bond, it breaks this bond, then we go back into the reaction. But there are lots of H plus. So there will be a pressure from for oxygen to form a bond with H plus. So this bond won't break. So either has it has to break this bond or this bond. So let me let me make it asymmetrical. Let me put a R dash here. Fine. Suppose it breaks this bond. It breaks this bond in such a way that it ne gets neutralized. It will get neutralized when it gains electron negative charge because it is already having a positive charge. So this carbon from whom we are breaking the bond will have a positive charge. This carbon got a positive charge and oxygen is neutralized and happy. So we have this. Now I broke this in such a way that this R, considering that R is more stabilizing than R dash. If R is more stabilizing then this carbon will give gain plus charge. Suppose if R dash is more stabilizing, then a plus charge would have occurred on this carbon and we would have broken this bond. So depending upon R or R dash, which one is more stabilizing, corresponding carbon will gain plus charge. Fine. So we have a plus charge and we have water in the system. That water would come and offer its, offer very humbly its electron to this carbon. This carbon will accept, but the problem would be then oxygen. Uh, let me rub this off. Then oxygen will gain plus charge. And we know how to get rid of that. If oxygen gains a plus charge, it removes off one of the hydrogen out. Fine. When one of the hydrogen goes away, oxygen becomes neutralized. And if we write it down decently, if we write it down decently, we don't write it down decently like this. Actually, what will happen here, when we are breaking this bond, then a pure plus charge will not be formed. Find that we understand. A plus charge cannot remain as it is like this. This bond cleavage and this bond formation by water will occur simultaneously. For the purpose of understanding, for clarity, I have shown it like this. And I have, but we have talked about this lots of time before, that a plus charge, a pure plus charge, a deficiency of pure one electron do not happen like this. When this oxygen was pulling its electron, simultaneously this oxygen will give its electron. So the, at, at a time, the plus charge on this carbon would be very less. So when that happens, because from one side the bond hasn't been completely broken and from oxygen simultaneously has to provide electrons, so oxygen has to provide from the other side. And when that happens, this oxygen actually will be providing its electron from the other side. So from the side of water is providing an electron, it will get attached to fr from that side. So if water is providing electron from the other side, this OH will come here and this OH could come here. So effectively, they will be joined on a different side of the molecular plane. So this OH will come actually on the other side. Fine. If you remember, in the last case of manganese, manganese had two oxygens like this and both get attached from the same side. So it was a cis. But here we are not having two oxygen from coming from the same molecule. 
this oxygen is coming this oxygen is actually coming from uh, peroxy acid but it was there in the epoxy ring so when it is breaking water is giving oxygen from the other side so two OH groups would be on two different side of the molecular plane so this will be a trans glycol trans vicinal diol so it will be on the other side of the molecular plane so it will be a trans glycol fine so this is how we get and this is a uh, this is the important reaction of opening chain of uh, epoxy ring. How epoxy ring gets open, and when a question is given, you have to take care on which side, which bond would you break, on which carbon will you get a plus charge. That would be decided by our group, which one is more stabilizing. Okay, let's solve a problem to get more clarity on this. So let's learn how to open up the epoxy ring. Suppose I already have this. Suppose I had previously I had alkene. And I added a peroxy acid. Now in the last reaction we have learned what happens when we add a peroxy acid. When we add a peroxy acid we get a epoxy ring. Fine. This we know. Now suppose I have to open up the epoxy ring. I added H plus H2O. Now you have to decide. This is carbon number one. This is carbon number one. And this is carbon number two. Or this is bond number one. This is bond number two. Which bond are you going to break? The first step. In the first step you form a coordinate bond with hydrogen. Oxygen has a plus charge. Now you have to, go, you have to break a bond. Either a two or one. Because that's how oxygen is going to get neutralized. So, which bond are you going to break? If we are going to break bond number 2, this is what you are going to get. Ethyl on this side. If we are going to break bond number 1, then this is what you are going to get. So, you have to decide which plus charge is more stable, which carbocation is more stable. And accordingly, you have to break. This carbocation is having a hyperconjugation. That's what you have. To, you know the order of precedency. First, you have to look resonance, and then hyperconjugation, and then inductive effect. Resonance is not operating here, so come down to hyperconjugating effect. If you look from hyperconjugation, this carbon is having four hyperconjugating structure: three from this side, one from this side. If you look at here, in ethyl, there this this ET is actually CH to CH3, right? So from this side you have 1 CH, from this side you have only 2 hydrogen, so 3 alpha hydrogen here, you have 4 alpha hydrogen here, so this one is ought to be more stable, right, from hyperconjugation. But if you would have looked from inductive effect, now as we know that larger the group, larger is the inductive effect, so this ethyl is going to cause more inductive effect than methyl. So if you look, if you look from the point of view of inductive effect, this must be more stable, but we would be foolish and delusive to think or to go by inductive effect because hyperconjugation effect is much more in, stronger than inductive effect that we have talked about million times before. So we will look for hyperconjugation. If you are not getting the answer by hyperconjugation, only then we will come down to inductive effect. So this one is more stable and this is how the this is how you will do the cleavage and another OH is going to come here. Fine. That's how it is. So th that's all about hydroxylation. So this reaction is over. We had cis hydroxylation from KMnO4, cold alkaline KMnO4, and osmium, os osmium tetroxide. And we have trans hydroxylation using peroxy acid and subsequent hydration of three member epoxy ring.